Ryan Fleming can help you chart out a course for your retirement with his intimate knowledge of financial planning and the airline industry. It's time for the Pilot's Advisor. This is the Pilot's Advisor. Welcome to another podcast episode. And we have a very special guest today. He has been on the show and uh, is the famous or infamous, I'm not really sure, uh, Lee Hyder on uh, the shores of Lake Erie in Northern Ohio. Lee, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, but we got these crazy mayflies. And if people have never lived along a lake, when the mayflies come in, they actually report it on the evening weather. And you would think it's like a storm coming in. It's these clouds of actually these nasty bugs. But the only good thing about the mayflies is, I guess, good from our point of view, not necessarily from their point of view, is they only live for one day. Oh, geez. Well, you need to stop eating them. That's a good point. It's it's great for the fish, but not so good for the people who live along the lake. I can only imagine, but at least you are on the lake versus uh, sitting out in the cornfields of Illinois like I am right now. I can only dream of the lake next year when we finally get there. Now, what? What? what why are you in Illinois? Uh, Scott Air Force Base. That's where my wife is finishing up her career at Scott Air Force Base, which is just on the Illinois side of St. Louis. And it's uh, basically right where the cornfields start. So there is... Very good. I see cornfields. Very, and very I see nice. dead people. And I see dead I'm people. Sure, and, and I'm sure your wife is very appreciative that you follow her around, which is very nice for you to do. <clears throat> the sacrifices that I make. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Anyway, so, Lee, I was thinking today that we're going to do a show that's a little bit different. And, of course, we haven't talked about this at all. But I want to do a show that's going to, it's going to be called A Random Walk Down Wall Street. And what that's going to entail is you and I, just going back and forth and, and talking about things. And I know you've been in the financial services industry for a long, long time and have a lot of experience. And when was the last down market that you experienced where the market never came back? Where it never came back? Yeah, where it never came back. Well, you know, I'm certainly not the smartest guy on this podcast, but I don't think I can recall a time when we experienced extreme volatility and it never came back. Because... It, I hate to say this, it always does or always has so far. And I don't think any of us have any real reason to think the volatility that we are experiencing today will continue forever. But this time it's differently. It's different this time. Well, you know, it's, it's so funny because that really is the battle cry that, that virtually every client says from time to time, when we go through a period of volatility, and it doesn't matter if it's 2008 or 2018 or, or uh, 2022, every time feels different. And the reality of it is, it is different. There's always something different. So yes, uh, this time does feel different, but as different as it feels, the fundamentals are the same because they always are. Well, absolutely. And I like to tell my clients, you know, I don't know if the next 20% is going to be up or down. I have no clue. It's totally unpredictable. But I do know that the next 100% is always going to be up because it always has been, always will be, I would, I would attest. But I think it's very interesting that you, you and I deal with you know, our clients on a day-to-day -day basis. And those clients that have been with me for a long time, I don't hear much from. We've, they, we know we, we've had a lot of education classes. We talk about volatility in markets, and it's, it's a part of the game. This is the volatility that's happening right now is what creates the returns. It's right. just, Nobody reaches out to me when it's, it's positive volatility. It's only when it's, it's negative volatility that I, that I hear from people. And, and I feel bad for those clients that haven't been with us uh, through a market downturn to see that when the market comes back, it comes back fast. And you got to make sure that you're taking advantage of it. And yeah. although, you know, we, we handle everything in our life with uh, emotions. And right now it feels like you know, you should do something. But of course, we both know in a down market, besides rebalancing and repositioning yourselves uh, for when the market comes back, this is the time when you shouldn't be doing anything. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, you know, as you know, I, I teach retirement planning and investment strategies at a few of Northeast Ohio's universities. So with your permission, uh, will you allow me to kind of put my professor hat on and just kind of give people a maybe a fundamental lesson about investing that maybe when things get a little scary, they can go back and kind of, you know, review? Of course, Lee. That's why we pay you thousands of dollars to be on the show. You know, I probably should give you my address because I don't think I have ever received even my first check. So I'll be sure at the end of the show to 
you know, give you that, you know, off air. But let me just let me just kind of, you know, really just go back to investing, because part of the problem, I think, with investing is it's gotten so sophisticated and so automated and so technological at, in respect to how people invest and, and how they look at their portfolios. They're looking at them on the phone. They're looking at them when they're having breakfast over the counter on a TV. People really lose the fundamental aspect of what investing is. So what I want to do for a moment for the listeners is really just break down their portfolio to one particular stock that they've bought. And it doesn't matter if it's Google or Facebook or Federal Express or whatever it is, it's one particular stock that makes up part of their entire portfolio. So they have to really say to themselves, why are they investing in that particular stock? And, and I would hope somewhere along the line, I know my clients have, I'm sure your clients have had conversations with you, they're basically investing in a company that they probably believe in their particular product, their service. So when you really invest in a company, what you're investing in is number one, you're investing in a company. Number two, you're basically saying that, you know, I think their particular product, whatever it is, makes sense and consumers are purchasing it. They've got a good management style. Their distribution is under control. They've got literally millions of customers. They've got inventory on the shelf and they probably own millions of dollars of real estate. So that's what you're really investing in. And when the market goes through a, a period of volatility where let's say that particular company loses in a relatively short period of time, maybe 30 or 40%, you really have to stop and ask yourself, and you just gotta break down exactly what I just said a minute ago about the individual elements of that company. Did all of those elements simply vanish? Has that company lost its customers? Did they unlock the garage one day and find their inventory is gone? All the they... iPhones disappeared and the buildings Absolutely. disappeared too. So the fundamentals of the companies that were worth 30% literally six or eight weeks ago are still intrinsically worth 30%. But there has been obviously with, with the news and the media and social media and all of these crazy things, there's an emotional element that really pushes the market and it pushes the market quick. So as an investor, because I'm an investor, just like you are, I'm actually taking advantage of the opportunities today of these companies that are literally on sale. And I'm putting my money in these companies. I'm buying more shares. So when things settle down, and of course they will, I'll be in a great position. And I hope your clients, I know my clients are taking advantage of this fire sale as well. Well, and that's that's the perspective on this whole thing. And I, I know it's a lot harder if you're in retirement and you're taking income. But when it's like when the markets are like this, I see it as a massive opportunity. I'm trying to buy as much of the market as I can right now because of that massive sale. And just from looking at history, I know it's going to come back. And when the market comes back, it normally comes back very, very fast, very strong. And so you really have to focus on taking the emotion out of things and looking at it for what it is. If you're not retiring no. today and you're continuing to put money in your 401k or, or your IRA or your Roth IRA, this is nothing but an opportunity. You know, and not only that, I think people also lose the fundamentals because they just really, again, as I said before, they don't really understand the market. I mean, people think, you know, if I simply want to sell something, I push a button and that particular thing is instantly sold. And that's really not true. You know, when you want to sell a particular position in the market, there needs to be a buyer. So for every person who's panicking, if you feel a sense of relief because you got out of a particular position, there's another person that's kind of laughing on the other side because he bought what you were selling in panic. And he, like I said, is going to be at the right place at the right time, buying products today that are on sale for when the market recovers, he'll be in a great position. So it's an incredible period today of what we call wealth transfer. The only real question is, are you going to give away your wealth to the buyer or are you going to just sit tight, not panic? Thanks for listening to The Pilot's Advisor. Hey, if you're ready to have clarity and thrive in your retirement, you're in the right place. And I've got another resource for you to check out. Go to retirepilots.com. That's retirepilots.com. And look right there on the homepage, you'll be able to click Get My Free Toolkit. What this is going to do is help you get for free Ryan's Retirement Toolkit. This is going to include his two books, The Pilot's Advisor and Pilot's Retire Early, revealing the nine critical decisions when retiring and the seven lessons to save your retirement. If you're ready to retire early or engage the autopilot on your 401k, 
these are the books for you, and this is the toolkit for you. Not only does it include the books, but lots of other goodies packed into this free toolkit that'll be sent to you ASAP. All you have to do is go to retirepilots.com. That's retirepilots.com. Click on the Send My Toolkit button, and we'll get it in the mail to you shortly. It's a great starting place for any pilot to begin their retirement journey. Go to retirepilots.com. What are some of the things you're hearing from your clients? I'm curious. To be honest with you, most of my clients that I have talked to, they're not panicked, and they're, they're like, you know, I know it'll come back. We've seen this before. Um, and we had two, two years of, of really track record to look at with the pandemic, where the markets were down 30-some percent, and then we finished the year up, I mean, pushing 40. So I think the, those uh, clients that I have that have been through that, they're, they're fine and okay. I've had a few that are nearing, you know, getting closer to retirement that are, that are a little bit more emotional, that need some more, you know, want to talk a little bit more about how things are going. And, and what, what's, what's so crazy about this is that people want, you know, we talked about people wanting to change something or do something or run for the hills. And I don't think they truly understand that if they go to cash or if they get out of the market or, and, and, and don't just have a foot in the market when it comes back, they're literally cutting their head off and locking in those losses, locking in that 30% loss. And, and I, it's so hard. I, like, Lee, I, I'd like to hear from you how you handle that, because you know that they're going to kill themselves and they'll never recover from it. But it's hard when they feel that much emotion to see the other side. Yeah. And, and I think now more than ever is when, you know, financial advisors like you and I, wealth coaches, really earn our money, you know, because it, it doesn't take much to have a successful business and have happy clients when the market's running. You know, but it's times of this, you know, when we find that people are scared, they're making emotional decisions, they really need to reach out to us and proactively, we need to reach out to them. You know, I I think um, 2020 was an amazing lesson for everybody. And I think sadly, it kind of uh, escaped a lot of people's observation. But, you know, if you look at March 20th of 2020, that was pretty much the low of the market. And, you know, honestly, we had people that were down as much as 25 to potentially 40% if they were a, you know, a very aggressive investor. And had I said to a client that was down 40%, had I said to them, you know, at the end of this year, um, you know, in January, had I met with them and I said, this is going to be a pretty interesting year. I think you're going to be up about maybe 42, 43% for the year. He would have just absolutely thought I was crazy. But the reality of it is, you know, you know, as I said, March 20th, we had people down from 15 to 25 to 30, 35 percent, even more. And virtually every single person recovered 100 percent of what their loss was and picked up some percentages on top of that as well. So nobody, nobody ever would have predicted those kind of recovery numbers in such a short lightning period of time. And I think investors need to really hold on to that. Because again, um, even though the market is down, I'm sure none of your clients nor are any of mine tracking is down as far as the market. So so there shouldn't be this sense of panic. But the sad part is there's nothing positive on TV, on the radio. Everybody's buying into doom and gloom. So it really takes somebody just to, to stay the course and for people like you and I to be reaching out to them and communicating with them, reminding them that we really have been here before. The headlines were different. But the market was down and this too will pass. So Lee, the, you know, the, the Dow is down over 20%, 20 some percent. I think the NASDAQ's down over 30% at this point in time. And if you had, you had a, a client come to you and said, hey, you, know, I, you lost 30% of my money. You lost 25% of my money. I, I, you know, the worst financial advisor ever. I need to go to cash. I'm, I'm firing you. How would you respond to that? How would you talk, to them, talk them through what they're truly actually doing and how they're going to hurt themselves by doing that? Sure. Well, the first thing I would do is there's, there's a common misconception when people are watching the news and they're seeing the Dow and the NASDAQ and the, you know, the S&P and they're seeing those numbers. People translate that that number that they're seeing as a down position translates to the amount of loss they had in their portfolio. You know, quite honestly, I mean, you know, we have nobody near the down position of the market because the only person who's down in your example, 30 percent is a person who really has 100 percent of their money in the Dow. And, and nobody working with what I would hope would be a financial professional would have anybody in such an undiversified position that they would be tracking the market in that correlation. So number one, I would bring to the client's attention that the things you see on TV do not translate to necessarily your portfolio. I would show them exactly where their portfolio is. So hopefully going forward, they would understand that the numbers that are scaring them every day on TV are not necessarily anywhere near what they're experiencing in their portfolio. 
But even with that being said, you know, when they may be down 14 or 15 percent, when the market may be down 30, you know, they need to understand that, you know, one of the things I say to my clients about that to kind of help them metaphorically understand, you know, in the dead of winter in Ohio, even along this beautiful lake, you know, it's very hard to find any trees that have leaves on them, because as we all know, the leaves fall during the fall. But I don't go out with an axe or a chainsaw and cut my trees down because there's no leaves on them in January. I know it's a seasonal thing and it does happen. Now, interestingly enough, maybe that particular tree that's missing its leaves in January may not really come back as strong as I would hope during the spring and summer. But a year later, all of a sudden, that tree is greener and brighter and fuller than it's ever been. And it's the same thing with the market. Everybody needs to understand the market goes through seasons. And those seasons may last a little longer than a 12-month on a calendar season. But the fact is, your portfolio will come back. It may not come back immediately. It may not come back as strong as you want. But the only reason that people really are in a good financial position to need a financial advisor in the first place is because they've probably weathered these kind of storms before. But interestingly enough, the recent situation is this 24-7 news cycle, which really adds to the anxiety that I don't really think existed 15 years ago, even during the same kind of market volatility. Well, absolutely. I think there's uh, emotional selling, emotional buying, and I think controlling uh, people's emotions. I think I think people are way too emotionally attached to their money to make sound, prudent financial decisions. And I think that that's why it's, we have a very important job to help save people from that, help save their wealth and ha have them stay the course. Because the reality is, I mean, when we build a portfolio and we engineer a portfolio, these things are going to happen. We know that this is a part of the market and you just got to make positive decisions, unemotional decisions, unemotional rebalancing. And I thought Mark Matson uh, put it well, the other day that uh, that my pilots, my pilot clients would understand. And he was saying that if you're on an airplane and you start having a, a bunch of turbulence, you don't just jump out of the airplane. I would hope not, for sure. Yeah. And, and you know, that this too shall pass and we will, you know, take take turns or, or wait it out or, or try to avoid the weather and, and the turbulence will eventually subside. And okay. it's hard to see that when and I know you watch the market every single day like I do because that's our job. But I, I encourage clients not to do that because it is it is very unhealthy and depressing to watch all the, the negativity that's on the news, whether it's financial or just the world we live in today. Yeah, I mean, I would I would love my clients to have the faith really in their financial future that I have. I mean, I, I can honestly tell you and the listeners, I don't know when I've really looked at my statement last I mean, and, and it's not that I have so much money that I can afford to lose, you know, all of my money, but it's very simply that I know we're in a particular cycle at this particular time and there's nothing I can do. I'm not going to change anything. As a matter of fact, I'm putting more money in my portfolio on a monthly basis, like I said, than I have in a long time because I've taken advantage of things that are on sale, but they just need to have faith. And I understand it's hard and that's why it's so critical for people like you and I to be communicating with our clients and for them to be reaching out to us if they're a little fearful, because it, it's at these times people, if they don't have anybody to turn to and they're simply left to their own resources, quite often they can scare themselves out of the market or worse yet, scare themselves in really changing their portfolio so significantly they actually cause themselves not only problems now, but they miss a good bit of the recovery when it comes back. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, out of respect for all our listeners, Lee, we're going to go ahead and tie the show up. But uh, I appreciate your words today. I appreciate you talking about these markets and how to make positive, prudent financial decisions and not make uh, decisions off of emotion. Uh, is there anything else you want to say to our listeners for today? Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to certainly tell you, I'm going to be emailing you my address so I can get some of those checks you've promised to send me. Oh, I've said, the check's in the mail, man. We've talked about this before. The check's in the mail. How often have we heard that, my friends? <laughs> now, the one, the one other thing I do want to say, if you're out there, if you're one of our listeners, one of our clients, even a, a prospect out there, if you guys have any questions or concerns with this market and you would like to chat, uh, feel free to reach out to me, text, email. Um, and we'll, we'll get back to you. And uh, once again, Lee, thanks for being on the show. All righty. Stay the course, my friends. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, investment, or legal advice. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.